Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. And in today's video, we are going to design this. A simple Google Map interaction using just Figma. So, what are we waiting for? Let's get started. So guys, we are in Figma right now. And the first thing we need for a map is a big map. So if you notice from oh, the Google map interaction is that you can move the map around in endless direction. Like you can move it up or down in any direction and the map uh, moves endlessly. Uh, to mimic that behavior, we need a really big map. Obviously we cannot make it uh, endless, but we need a big enough so that we can, uh, big enough map so that we can just uh, mimic that endless behavior. There are two ways of getting that map. You can either get the map from a screenshot. You can just go to googlemaps.com and then uh, just quickly grab a screenshot and that screenshot desktop screenshot should be big enough for this purpose The second and much more better way of doing it is through a Figma plugin called Mapsicle uh, Just install the plugin from the community tab in Figma and I'll show you how the plugin works So this plugin is really versatile and it's free of cost. So you should definitely try it out uh, This is how the plugin looks like um, You have a position so basically you can scroll to any part of the world and basically get a screenshot or the map of it um, you can zoom the map as well so if you want like a certain zoom level we should get you can do that from here you can set it to like 13 let's say 13 works for our case so we'll set it to 13 uh, you can also set up the size of the map that you want so as i said uh, we need a really really big map so what we'll do is we'll set it to something like 2000 and 2000 so this should be good enough for us to get a map now you also have a lot of styles available in Mapsicle. So you can basically select like streets, you can select outdoors. So basically it's a different look and feel of the map. You want a dark map for a dark theme map. So you can get that as well. Uh, for now, let's just stick to streets. And you have some other features, we'll just leave it to default and we'll hit create map. So as soon as we hit, hit create map, it just takes a little bit of time and gives you a really, really giant image. So if you see, we have got a 2000 pixel versus 2000 pixel big map image here with us now uh, what we want we want to drag this map into our artboard so if you see with our artboard i have already set up a small search icon search tab uh, just a rectangle with a text and an icon uh, now let's drag our big map into the screen yes so um, i have just dragged the map into on the iPhone artboard that I already have and I just move the search bar up so that's always stay on the top of the map uh, if you see the map is hidden right now because uh, the overflow is hidden right now because I have set the properties of the map uh, artboard to clip content if you remove clip content then you can see that the map is actually uh, pretty big so what we'll do is we'll center line the map and we again do clip sub con uh, su clip content so that we don't see anything outside flowing of the artboard okay so now this looks like our map uh, the map is actually bigger but that we are just not seeing the hidden one the overflow from the artboard now what we want to do is uh, we first need to group it so uh, i'll add other things as well we want to also want to add pins on this map so this group will serve that purpose and we'll set the property of this group we'll change the property of this group to frame now what frame does is it gives you a bounding box and it helps you set alert another property in prototype which i'll just quickly show you so um, if you don't know about how frame works i think you should definitely check out figma's documentation around frames so frame does nothing to the content inside basically it just sets a bounding box and you can change the bounding box dimension it will not hamper anything inside that group and uh, you can just set up anything the way you want so that only thing that is in the bounding box is visible and anything apart from the bounding box will not be visible so if you see we have set it to frame and our map is inside this frame one uh, we'll just call it map for now and if you see the bounding box is quite big so we need the bounding box to be same as the artboard uh, or our iphone artboard so what we'll do is we'll the iphone artboard is 414896 we'll set the bounding box the same 414 Eight nine six, and we'll align it in the center yeah so uh, we have aligned the map and we also need to align the map in the center because map is also moved up so yeah 
So now if you see, um, if I can show you, yes. So let me push you this. So map is in the center, and this um, map frame that we have built contains this enlarged map. And we'll do a click content, and it will hide the overflow of the map. Okay. So now that we have done this, let's just quickly go to our prototyping tab. And here you see overflow behavior. So basically the bounding box that I was talking about. Now it's the Figma is giving an option to set a behavior for that box. So what we'll say, we'll want to horizontally and vertically scroll the contents in that frame, which is basically this giant map. Now if we just quickly hit prototyping play, let's see how it looks like. Does it even work or not? So yeah, I'll just give it a couple of minutes. Uh, since the map is really big, it takes some time to look. Yeah. Now, if you see, I am able to move the map in all directions, right? It's behaving the same way a Google map works. So, um, very simple. Just put a map in a big map in a frame, and then set the frame properties to horizontal and vertical scrolling. So, I think we have done the first bit of it. Uh, I'm we are fifty percent there. Now we also want pins on the map, and clicking on those pins should show you the details of that location. So let's quickly build that. So what we'll do is um, we'll quickly select, we'll hit our oval shape option uh, and create a circle. We'll create a circle of 24 pixel width uh, with white fill. And we also want a stroke to it. Um, we'll add a stroke to this. And stroke width of 4 and outside yeah so now this will become our pin okay so this has become now this is our pin and we also want that this pin should move along with the map so I have clubbed them in the map frame that I have already built so if you see here um, I'll just show you the prototyping again so if you see the pin is there and you can move it as as you drag it stays in the position so that's what we want now let's set up a few more pins really really quickly okay guys so i have set up quite a few pins here uh, other pins are not visible i'll quickly show you how it why it is how it looks like so if you see this is the big map we have and i have set pins even outside so that when you scroll in the map you also see the pins right uh, let me just clip content again. So now you're only seeing three pins here. Great. Uh, let's quickly see the interaction. So yeah, the different pins stick together and it gives you this nice feeling of uh, the map. Now what you want to add is, we want that upon clicking of these pins, we should also see the detail of these pins, right? We should see the detail of that location. So to do that, let's build that details page. So I have really, really quickly set up this small tooltip sort of a view where it's nothing. It contains a background, a rectangle where we're going to fill our image, uh, name of the location, for example, coffee roasters uh, nearby the area and how much distance is there from your current location. So it's a dummy uh, pill that I have created. And this will be invoked when we hit the small location circles. Okay. Uh, let's quickly fill this with an image. So we'll go to plugin, uh, click on Unsplash, and it'll just open the Unsplash one. We'll search for coffee places. So if you see, Unsplash gives you a really nice collection of coffee places. Um, what I'll do is I'll just select. Uh, and select maybe something like just let's copy. Yeah, so I'll select this image. Perfect. So if you see uh, with Unsplash, I just got this image, and this tooltip is ready for us. Uh, I have grouped everything together and called it location details. Now I also want to convert this into a component. Um, so if you don't know what component is in Figma, you really do the documentation. You can create a component and change properties of central component uh, from Figma. And you can create instance of those components where you can apply overrides and you can change properties around it. So since we want like two, three pins, 
and all the pin the structure is going to be same just that image and the description is going to be different so uh, what we are going to do is we are going to create pins along with it uh, so we are just going to uh, duplicate this and create instance of this component so you should definitely learn about components and the instances from figma documentation so now what we have done is we have our main component and we now have the instance We'll just quickly come and override this. So, coffee roasters, change to coffee riders. Uh, we'll just quickly change the image. Go to plugin and splash. And let's search for Starbucks. Okay, got it. So, we add this one image and we got first. Now let's duplicate it once more and we call it let's call it Starbucks. So we'll only simulate uh, let's say three plugins. Okay, and just quickly change it to some other image. Maybe something like this. Okay, great. So now we have three pins with us. One says coffee roasters, one says coffee riders, and one says Starbucks. Structure-wise, all these are all these three are same because they are the same component. Um, just that the other two are instances, and we have changed the image overrides. Okay. Now what we want, we want. Let's just bring them closer. Okay. Great. So we have three pins visible here. What we'll do is we'll first the link when we click on this first pin. Uh, we should see this uh, first pop-up coming up, right? So what we'll do, we'll go to the prototype tab and we'll create interaction. Okay, and we'll drag this to this. Now we want it on tab. We don't want navigate to, we want open overlay. And I'll explain you in a bit how overlay will work. So overlay basically comes on top of the existing screens. Uh, here it says centered, we don't want centered we want manual so as soon as you do manual uh, figma shows you a small overview of how the um, component is going to look like when you do manual and we want it just above our circle okay great and we want the animation to be something like a dissolve so that's a little bit smooth and ease out and yeah and we also want that when we click outside of this component the component should disappear again to the circle and we again when we click back to the circle it appears again so what we'll do is we'll select this option close when clicking outside great so now let's quickly see if it works or not so here's our map if i click great it works right if you click anywhere outside it disappears and again also when you move it up or down let's say I moved it really down and I click it again it also maintains the scroll position so this is really nice uh, we'll do the same thing for the three I'm gonna speed this bit now let's quickly see how the interaction looks like for the three pins so here is our map if I click here I see the details, I click here, I see the details, see here, I see the details. Great. So uh, you can replicate this for all the other pins and now you can simulate the same experience. So we are done with our tutorial, uh, like really, really easy way with just one artboard and components. We have created a map interaction in Figma really easily. Uh, what I have done is I have also added a splash screen to it so it becomes a really uh, slightly more better touch to it so i've added a small splash interaction uh, i've not explained how i did the splash interaction in this video i'll do it in an upcoming video so do subscribe to my channel uh, so that in future you can really really get to know how to do those splash screens the idea going forward from here is that i'll do small small interaction in figma and in the end we're going to build a really complex app when we know the basics of uh, interactions in figma we'll try to exploit every other thing in figma and we'll use it only figma to do it no other software, nothing else, just Figma and we'll see how we can create a really high fidelity prototype in Figma. 
So guys, uh, this was the map interaction. Uh, I'll link the video after this, the interaction with the splash screen. Uh, do subscribe to my channel. Let me know uh, if you liked it or not. And yeah, share it, try it out. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.